So yeah, we're going to dive in to looking at kind of what the challenges are of sort of enabling and facilitating students when they're creative problem solving. It's definitely not an easy thing to do. Um, so we'll look at how STMath can help that process of getting kids engaged in creative problem solving. We feel it's really necessary for students to struggle, to learn through doing, um, and when students can kind of struggle and grapple with interesting problems and then creatively come to solutions, that's when the learning is really deep. So that's kind of the, the big broad picture of what we sort of like to try and do. And I know that creating classrooms where there is that spirit of inquiry, where kids are really engaged in problem solving in a deep way is a difficult thing to do. And there's a couple of reasons for that. And we'll sort of unpack those and look at what those challenges are. First of all, of course, curriculum very often is not geared towards creative problem solving. And it's not that easy to find materials that kind of lend themselves to that type of approach. Um, and even when you can find problems that do that, there are other issues as well. So we're going to sort of define the space we're looking at here with this rigor relevance chart. So in this case, I'm going to talk about the idea we here we have an axis of thinking from sort of low level knowledge regurgitation to high level creative thinking. And here we've got an axis of application, the idea being we've got routine problems and non-routine problems. And obviously a lot of the tasks that we traditionally find in textbooks and the things that kids are asked to solve on worksheets very firmly belong in this bottom right, bottom left quadrant where we've got. And obviously what we want to do is we want to try and get kids working up here where they're solving non-routine problems and they're having to think creatively to solve those problems. Okay, so now we're moving into um, kind of starting to get to that fifth grade level that we were looking at before. Not at, um, unlike denominators yet, but we're starting to have students build. They're having to take more ownership of creating the answer. So in this instance, you can see we've got two quarters and one quarter. And now they can't just click on which one. They actually need to build the denominator themselves. Then they need to choose what they're going to cut the box into. We're going to cut it into four pieces, into quarters, and in this instance, we're going to choose three of those. 